Cloud9 versus OG Seed Game 2. Draft is... Underway. Underway. Oh, you're like a wizard. Thank you. I summoned it with my Dota magic. Someday, Dan, I'll pass on those tricks to you. Oh, please. You know what I'm very excited for seeing these two teams, by the way? I'm really excited for the regionals next year. Like the regional tournaments and stuff. Yeah? Yeah, I think it'll be really good for like these teams. Not to like call them bad or anything, but like... They're firmly at the moment, anyways, tier two, and so that'll give them even like more of a platform to like continue to grow and get better and stuff. Because for me, it's like I know they beat our team 2-0, but I was like just as excited. I really like Chessy, uh -huh. Madara. I think they're all really nice guys. Like you want to see that kind of success for those teams that like stuck together and have had to like persevere for a while. Yeah, you want to see them hit that next level. Like, I you mean, for be for, for both them. of these teams, it's like they come to this and they're like. Oh, great experience. Like, we get a lot of uh, opportunity to scrim, play official matches and stuff. It it's really prepares for sure. us for the future, and then they go back home. Yeah. yeah. And then maybe they play some scrims against, you know, whatever. Like, maybe the Tier 1 teams are gone because of the majors. They only have, like, other Tier 2 teams to play against. But it's yeah. not an official match. Because that's one League, thing, too. You know? They, they, they want some games. Yeah. Get some games in, some officials. The rich get richer in, like, Dota. Because, for example, like, we play, we like to scrim against Tier 1 teams, right? Uh -huh. Like, we'll play against the best teams that we can, or, like, the DPC teams. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so, like, that's why we haven't really played OG Seed much. And so I'm sure they get stonewalled a lot by, like, a lot of the top teams or, like, they're over... Like they're under prioritized and stuff like that. I've I've heard stories of like tier two teams where they they get the callback of, yeah, we we can scrim you if uh if this other team drops yeah. out. Oh if yeah, they, yeah. If, if they for end up, they might be canceling on us. So th th it, it, it's been gone for going on for a while. I'm not gonna lie. As a manager, like I did that. Like I'm just like yeah, we'll we'll schedule against uh, a team, but you know I'll also have a backup team just in case. <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> you guys want to scrim me? <laughs> yeah. Being a manager, might get your chance. You kind of have to be an asshole in that way though, because you want to give your team. You want to do right by people, obviously, but you also want to give your team the best possible practice at all times, right? Like mm -hmm. be giving charity scrims where your team won't really care as much because there's nothing on the line. Uh, we have had to play a few scrims like that where it was like, it's probably the honorable thing to do. Let's not cancel. Let's just play it out. But there's no way you can get your team motivated in the same way as if I said like, hey, we're going to scrim OG or we're going to scrim Nigma or something like that. Like, be on your bet. Like, bring your A game. Yeah. yeah. Do you like to scrim a wide variety of teams, or is it better to scrim the same people, good people? Again, Three or again. four teams. Okay. Narrow it down, like, as good as they are, and then rotate them. You don't want to play, like, two teams. That's too low. You'll develop your own meta. But, like, four teams in rotation, like, you play two a day, then the next day two, then it becomes fresh and fresh. Because they're also playing other teams and learning, mm -hmm. and so you're, like, pooling ideas almost. But that's why, like, for OG Seed and Cloud9, it's so important to be here and so important to go far. For a team like OG Seed, this is the best, best practice that mm -hmm. they can get. They get to play for money against teams that have to play against them, that have to bring their A game. Right. This will be what makes them better and levels them up. And well, for Cloud9, it might be the only practice they get, seeing as they're now an NA team. Sure. And, uh, you know, there's next a year, lack that's, of that, scrims. That's why we have the league. <laughs> that's why we have the league. And officials, <laughs> officials are always better than uh than scrims yeah you talk about motivation hear the motivation hey we're gonna play against the sammy boy stack today guys yeah uh, you, you, you want to talk about trash scrims like sometimes those are even worse for you to play than if you had just not played them at all because you know like That's people like get lethargic in them and you're yeah. just like not trying you develop bad habits and people are just like they just feel like they waste the time yeah it's the eighth time we shit on sammy boy my bad dude <laughs> don't not me man I mean, Sammy Boy, I'm sure, will appreciate the brand value. <laughs> He's trying to get his name out there. He's looking for a team. <laughs> All press is good press. I got press. you, Sammy. Yeah. yeah. There you go. All right. But that is the point of the new league system. I was more making a point of, like, that's the biggest thing about NA. It's not teams. It's stacks you put together for a qualifier. You're I, not you're actively playing. <laughs> I will say this about the league system, though, and I mm -hmm. think this is a, a has been echoed universally across all the conversations I have. Let's have more officials. In the in the actual regular league play, mm. I think teams playing one bo three uh, a week is not enough. I yeah. want I want to see at least two, at least mm. two. I could I'm a fiend, you know. I I could even go for three. Yeah. Oh wow. Here we see our odds between Cloud Nine OG Seed. After watching that first game, I actually think I actually don't think the odds changed that much no. from the start of game one to this to game. If anything, OG Seed. So the way that it works is like you get 1.27 times your money. Is that how it works? Mm -hmm. 
decimal. I don't understand fractional odds, decimal odds. It's just the amount of times. I only know the American way of like plus one hundred or whatever, plus like eight fifty. I thought like you that. would like have this more down on lock. And that's how. Be that's like how. But that's how. That's how the American gambler that you that's, are. So it's like the plus one hundred is like if you put in a hundred, you get a hundred. Yeah, yeah. Back yeah. and stuff yeah. like that. So I don't actually know. I think Mickey was trying to explain it to me. It's like it's so if you put in a hundred, it's like one point. Two seven times like a hundred bucks, so you get like twenty seven dollars back. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie, William. You trying to talk about this right now on stream is making all of us look stupid. Because my job is to point towards those odds for other people to understand it. I'm, I'm never here listen, to explain listen. it. To that, them. No, no, no. It just makes <laughs> them look like more degenerate. We're pure boys. We've yeah. never touched a casino uh, in our lives. Yeah. Well, ch okay, chill, chill, but chill. I do think, <laughs> I do think like OGC should be with how they've performed should be bigger favorites mm. than mm. what they're currently showing. Yes, but. You've got Jackie Mao. Yeah. Keep on saying this. Backs against the wall. Backs out. against the wall. Well, what more ultimate way to be back against the wall than your final game? This is the most back against the wall you can. He's yeah, pretty much can't. in the wall. Yeah, you're basically moment. like melded with the wall at this point. <laughs> Aosin made a joke backstage. He's like, it's a shame we don't play nine games so I could make C09. <laughs> C09. <laughs> I mean, that's what they were right now in the standings. So. Yeah. Uh, Gyrocopter. Hey, let's talk about this draft, shall we? Uh, a bounty hunter, which was an interesting pickup. Ember with a Legion commander. Gyrocopter shows his face without an IO. But we got the misery special, the bounty hunter. I think the bounty hunter. Nice. So the way that Earthshaker works right now, or like why he's so good, is because he represents a kill threat in every single lane. Mm -hmm. Like he's going to come mid it, at level one. Th this hero doesn't really need levels because eventually what will happen is like you'll be some level two Earthshaker, but wherever the safe space on the map is where the tower is taken, you'll always give your Earthshaker that farm. If you're a good team, that's what you do. So for example, like let's say you take, uh, you're on dire side, you take bottom. All that space is now yours. You're going to get like a solid four or five minutes where you are not expected to move. You can just farm your blink dagger and get levels back. And so like level one fissure is so value, especially for mid lane or top. If you go gank and you can block off, there's like nothing that they can do. So that hero I think is really good. And the way that I think you beat it or whatever is like pace it with this bounty hunter that follows him around, makes it so that you always know where he's going. Just try to be as annoying as possible. Hmm. Did what? you understand that, Charlie? I did, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> what sort of ban are you expecting here? Quick uh, prediction. I think right now OG Seed have okay tower hitting. Their control is pretty good. Um, maybe they lack for damage a little bit, like spell damage. Well, there you go. Spell damage. It's there you uh, go. So Kunk is pretty good. And for Cloud9, they need... Mm, some safe laner? Mid laner, maybe? Yeah, I, I could see them doing... I probably don't think you... I don't know if you want to go Ember versus Kunkka mid. That was like TNC's old counter member cap. Yeah. Like whenever people pick Ember in that meta, they would just insta snap pick Kunkka. Um, I could see like Monkey King or something being pretty good here. They don't really have damage to burst you under ulti very easily, and I think you do pretty well mid. Didn't Jackie play Monkey King mid earlier? Anything that takes advantage earlier. of yeah. Grimstroke ult. I mean, wouldn't wouldn't Jackie play the Ember? Does yeah. And then Ace Ace would play the Monkey. I could. Oh, Monkey's banned. Um. Then it would be. I could see an Arc Warden actually. Yeah, for Ace. With uh, the Legion. Meepo. Meepo's doable. Huskar. Huskar. Well, that's a cheesy hero instead. Who's gonna win? OG versus Cloud Nine. My analysts, a little subpar today, so I'm going to give them 60 seconds. Yo, I think already... about their analysis. I don't need. Before they give me who's going to win. Thank you, Charlie. Fuck you. <laughs> All right, Charlie. Now you can continue to explain why your original prediction of Cloud9 losing this game is correct. Due to these hero picks, but do it through the medium of a rap battle against Dan. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> that was I right. can barely speak regularly <laughs> correctly. Production, drop a beat. <laughs> I can't do it to a beat. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, what were you saying, Charles? I was just going to say, I, I pick OG because 
I originally said it, and I have to... You're a man of your word. I'm Fair a man enough. of my word. I have to plow along that path. But if I hadn't, I would have picked Cloud9. Because of the house guy? Yeah, I like that lineup better. But I also haven't, like, I don't really play Dota, so I don't, I don't, I just don't so know anymore. that's based on nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dan, what do you think? I, I do like the Cloud9 lineup, but I, I worry they're just going to run into this Kunker and this Earthshaker and just get blasted down. You're just going to get out team fight? Yeah. It's, uh, you got some Wombo combos in there for sure. But if this Huskar gets big, anything can happen. I mean, not anything. They can win a game of Dota, I think. Yeah, the one thing that can happen is them making playoffs. That's true. Wow. No matter how big the Huskar gets. I think they won this in 30, 30 seconds. The production <laughs> would just be like, you know, fair play to them. <laughs> <laughs> They you <laughs> you will now replace OG Seed in the playoffs. <laughs> William, what do you think? Uh, I think... Who you got? Um, so I don't know. I kind of like OG Seed's lineup. Their Beastmaster has to have a good game, though, because I think they need a Roche mechanic themselves. And if he gets really farmed and he gets, like, Flads and all that, then maybe they can Roche and maybe they can just, like, snowball a win. Now, were you taking into consideration... The soul bind into double track into, into double, yeah. double bouncing shuriken. Dang. Wait, it gets better. Okay, let's hear it. You get a bunch of kills with that. You get an ag. 4,200 gold later. An aganim scepter. That's a double bounce with two shurikens. That's quadruple bouncing, baby. You know, I played against that once. Yeah? Yeah, I was with Shiver Noen. Yeah? Um, and we were losing the game like 20 to 4 or something. Uh -huh. And it was terrible, so they ended up losing. Well, you guys clearly executed it poorly because it's. No, if we played you get against it, it. We played against oh, it. Oh, oh. Well, they obviously executed very well <laughs> because it increases the stun duration as well. So if it's only those two, it just bounces between yeah, them. It it's hurt. basically it's basically Witch Doctor cast. It was some weird point. infinite. It was <laughs> so it, it destroyed us early, but then we ended up winning because Owen owns a beast mm. in like one out of every like fifteen games. <laughs> You know what would be really cool? What? If Huskar ults into Grimstroke ults, split the Huskar into two. Ah. Uh, who would control the second Huskar? The way that the LC one works is technically they're both dueled, right? And then you take yes. turns dueling them? Yeah. No, you don't take turns. Whoever you originally dueled, is you your finish first that duel, and then you move on to yeah, the other Yeah, that's what I duel. meant. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what take turns means. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, take turns means you like hit one once, and then you're like, "All right, next hit, hit the other one." No, I thought I, I thought that was pretty clear. Dan understood it pretty easily. No, honestly, I thought I thought you just attacked one and then attacked the other it's one. A weird thing, dude. It's the same thing when you get like uh, Rubik Steel's duel. If you duel the Legion Commander, that ain't gonna work. She's gonna keep focusing on that first person until the duel is done. Until the deed is done. Hole up. Uh, but I think I think I like OGC's lineup. I, I think it's really well balanced. They have good catch. They have good uh, building damage. I think their lineup scales pretty well. Um, personally, in these kinds of games, like I like to see who gets who has like the easier way of jumping. Mm -hmm. And a large part of Cloud9's jump is coming from like this bounty hunter vision and this like Ember poke, which I think is really good. But I think the Beastmaster Hawk is probably like the most valuable thing in this game. Yeah. The, the only thing I'm concerned about for OG Seed is just the slight bit of problem of if they start getting overrun by Huskar, they do have several heroes that need some farm, right? You yeah. need Blink Dagger on Earthshaker, and then your cores obviously all need some farm. They're not very independent of that. Beastmaster likes to sit in lane. Gyrocopter obviously needs progression. and Good old Kunkka could definitely use a Heaven's Halberd this game. This isn't your typical... Uh, Huskar game though, because he doesn't have a save. Mm, that is true. Oh, but Dara just suicided. Yeah, he kind of just ran in there and got bopped. Misery gave him the Janata. That was really weird. Cause uh, he had to have known what was gonna happen. He just kind of walked in to the center of a bunch of creeps and two heroes and got clicked down. Have we seen the bounty hunter this tournament yet, or is it brand new? This might be the first. Unless like Thunder Predator played it or something in like one of the tier or the uh, stream twos. I feel like I've seen it recently, but I can't say where. As in, in you're forbidden. <laughs> Somebody said no. 
for Yo, it. Yo, Austin. You may never reveal this. <laughs> Isn't this a free lane for Austin? I can't remember. Swore not. You shall not speak. <laughs> Dude, I'm pretty sure this is a free lane for Elsie. Uh, I, yes, I like the matchup uh, against Legion or uh, against Jarakov. I'm always okay with that matchup. And Bane isn't very good uh, unless he can zone out one on one, two yeah. on one. It's like both these heroes uh, really rely on being able to have enough damage to zone you out. And Legion Commander's a little bit like Centaur, in that you are generally tanky enough. You just kind of sit in your creep wave. Legion isn't as tanky as Centaur, but she has the advantage of self-sustain. Oh, the double rune. Well, this might change right. things. It needs to. The arcane invisibility. For Z-Freak. Or but Zed freak as you Europeans would call him. <laughs> He's an NA player, though, so it's a uh, sign of respect. True, true. <laughs> I go with the... Uh, <laughs> you know, so so we were we were talking about this with him earlier, how NA players, or European players, can come to NA, and they they, mm. they can become NA. But NA players can't go to Europe and become EU. They'll yeah. always be NA. It's like how Crit, and to a lesser extent, I still kind of consider him NA, Zai. Zai is definitely NA. Yeah, Zai's a goon. And that's not saying NA is holding them back from being European. It's just that you Europeans won't accept us. What's with that, Dan? It's uh, you're just very well, loud. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you can ask you hear Dan. Us yelling it. at a restaurant, and you're like, "That's an American right there." I don't know if you can, if Dan can answer that question anymore because uh, he's not European anymore yeah. either. Yeah, you <laughs> can't claim Fine, that yeah. either. Oh dear. I'm well, misery's off to a good start. Uh, Misery's getting in there. I, I am happy to see this because Bounty Hunter is just awful to watch when he's he doesn't do anything in the laning phase and then you go to team fights and he doesn't have any gold and he's just kind of sitting around tracking some people, still losing fights. So Misery's proven that this hero may still got it. We'll see. And that will also give us the save that maybe the Huskar needs. Get a Guardian uh. Greaves, Medallion, something. On, on Misery? Sure. Yeah. It's usually where you go still, right? Yeah. Team, fight, team fight items. He'll kill some couriers. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of that. Oh. Okay. Gets them both stunned. Not that Pilot Die can do a whole lot with that stun. Eternal Levy's still trying to uh, deal with that boar that's now sitting on top of Pilot Die and is slowing him down long enough that with the rotation from Peksu doesn't give them anything but moral support, but it is enough to get the kill. And Eternal Envy, he says, I'm out of here. All three lanes are going pretty decently, though, for C9. But I've seen them, like, win the lanes and have some disastrous stuff happen. That, yeah. That's been all their whole tournament, though. They've done reasonably in the early game, pretty much. Well, they didn't last game, but usually they're doing quite well in the early game, and they're just not... Bang, 20 minutes in, they start crumbling. Yeah, you don't really have to be, a, a like, a team... To figure out laning phase, right? It's just yeah. you and your other guy. Like, there's a lot of we individual do this all skill. the time, right? You just get off individual skill. Once you get past ten minutes, that's where team identity comes into play. That's where who's calling what, who's listening, yep. where do they go? I mean, they could have beaten Niji in both those games. Mm -hmm. um, so I feel like this team, they're not really like you can see they're not really lacking for skill or anything like that. It's probably just more. They need more time. Like I don't know how long they've been playing together. Less than a week. Yeah. So it's like you probably just need a little bit more time. I think what's also notable is that quite a few of their players have barely played this season. Like Ace was in Danish Bears for just a little bit. Pylai Dies was in the old Cloud9 for something about Something burning? Week. Yeah, I was about to say, I'm not having a stroke, am I, Charlie? <laughs> no, no, is there a candle burning or something nearby? What's happening? Oh, dear. There's a lot of exits. smell of ozone. I'm sure it's fine. It's just our red hot analysis. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but to continue your point, yeah, I, I don't think they have played. It's just uh, Envy, Snay, and that's sort of it, right? Yeah, because they've been playing, but the other three have been very limited. So I think that they still look skilled is a testament to something. Yeah. I just whoa, feel like whoa, whoa. it's too easy to like shit on C9 like, nonstop. It's like mm. low-hanging fruit. Yeah, you got to see I, the I, positive and stuff, too. I think next season they're going to be a lot better. I, I actually think they're in contention. 
here, all right. You all, you can put me down on this right now. Okay. I say next season. Oh. Kill they will on the Snake King with the missile flowing in. That's going to be enough damage. Now they're going to turn over to Misery, who they do have vision of because he's still barely inside the sentry. And Is he out? And he limps away. Oh, oh he's one got more one, shot, one more 14, shot. 14, 14. Somebody get it. He's oh. throwing out a sentry. Mystery's hiding in the trees. He's been bottled up. He, now he's going to be able to walk away. I was so smart by both sides. Madara tried popping his flak and aggroing the newts uh -huh. so that he could get the extra hit. And then Misery ran into the corner and he got bottled twice by Envy. Mm -hmm. So nice. that he would be able to survive. He dodged the hits. Well, not to worry, both. William. We had a very respectful oh. cast oh. earlier oh, yeah. I see. We did. of Cloud9 with Crip. Crip is very positive. Oh, duel. Ember Spirit jumping in, trying to help him with that, winning the duel, but they don't quite get it. They are going to be able to kill Pexu eventually here, but a one-for-one -one support trade-off is not what they wanted. They wanted a little bit more, and that's where Z-Freak may be the target of their aggression or not. They just Maybe. don't have any disables because they don't have any Searing Chains because Eternal Envy is only level 6. Fair. It all flows together. Charlie, you're in the middle of a bold prediction before that yes. kicks off. I, I, I think C9 will be the second best team in NA next season. So, so what do you mean by next season? Next majors? No, oh, sorry, sorry. Not uh, after after um, TI. Yeah, after TI. After TI. That is a bold prediction yeah, I'll because say, I'll my say. my I'll totally unbold prediction is this same team will not be together next year. <laughs> Well, that's why that'd be, it'd be a different. Well, you're player. just a coward. Ah. <laughs> ah. <laughs> They're going to be able to catch the Earth Shaker here. Quickly surround him. Bring him down. Fifth kill for Cloud9. Fortunately, didn't get the dual damage, but kills kill. And all, all the meanwhile, they've been fighting and stuff, and like Huskar's just been farming. And that's their win condition, right? So. Misery's killed so many couriers this game. Snapping them. I remember when I thought that when the patch hit that like Nature's Prophet and Bounty Hunter were going to be like mm. first two picks. Everyone's just going to run around like TPT. TP. Oh, yeah. I'm glad that didn't turn into the case. That's the thing I don't like about the new patch, that killing a courier is no longer exciting. Like mm. in the old days, it used to be like, oh my god, they killed the courier. Like, do you remember in the TI when Baboka killed every courier ever? Yes. And that was amazing. I still mm -hmm. remember it. But now, who cares? That's a whole side of the game that's been removed. Still going to be able to catch somebody here. Huskar first coming into play. It's going to be pulled back into the axe, into the boat. But they don't quite have enough damage to kill him. No, maybe they do with the Jarcopter. They actually do get that kill. Madar shows up, kills the highest net worth hero in the game. Dodging that enchant totem. Eternal Levy is able to get back, back, back behind the tier one tower. OGC pressing forward as five. Four of them tracked up. This is what I mean by playing Huskar without a save is not the same as like playing Huskar when you have some like Oracle or uh, something that has like a heal that can just like sit behind him and like purge off and like reset his fight. Yeah, like, we, you're talking real saves, yeah. right? Oracle saves, uh, Dazzle saves. This is a press the attack. Yeah. Yeah. It's not It's not nearly as effective because like Huskar wants the ability to just be like, you have to just like run from me for X amount of seconds. Like mm -hmm. if you fight him head on and you have overwhelming damage, like, you can kill him. He's not going to survive off just the armla. It'll be a little bit annoying, but it's not like anybody else from C9 is putting out enough damage right now that you have to, like, uh, kill him first and then somebody else is, like, dealing a ton of damage so your fight gets wonky. Once again, Cloud9 are going to try and force the fight here. They put the Ink Stroke onto the Bounty Hunter, but they're going to turn and focus on Snaking, leaving the Bounty Hunter for a secondary kill thanks to the Nightmare from Pexu. OGC, they're more than willing to just group up around this mid-tower every single time Cloud9 approaches. Yeah, and here's the other real weakness of Bounty Hunter, is that if you decide to get five-man by Beastmaster, you don't do anything. Your team fight is like, you throw out tracks like a pervert, and you just wait. <laughs> wait, wait, like a pervert? <laughs> yeah, I call all Invis heroes perverts. Uh, She's sitting there watching, but not doing anything, you know? Not actively participating. She's like heavily breeze. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tracking you. That's yeah, it's, it. it's really weird. That's all he does. He just watches you from afar. I get it. I get it. Out of all of the Invis heroes, who do you think is the most perverted? Uh, probably Ricky. Ricky. Yeah. Yeah. Because he's because he's invis. permanently Invis. Yeah. Dude, dog, he can't help that. He can't help that. It's a skin condition. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's like eczema. <laughs> That's not an excuse anymore. There's no way you could turn off your invisibility. You know, it just is what it is. Hey, yeah, there there are treatments for eczema. You also could just not level it. Like it's not like Bounty Hunter where he like <laughs> I will play the honorable <laughs> about the yeah. Riki Maru.
That's I don't know. That's just always what I've called it. Like whenever envious things like perverts. <laughs> so, so so is this stem from the question of like which would you take, flight or invisibility? Like it, you just secretly judge anybody who chooses yeah, I would take invisibility. Yeah, every day of the week. A anyone who chooses invisibility, you're just like you're a pervert. Uh, yeah. What else are you gonna use that invisible? <laughs> Be real here. I mean, you could steal. Yeah. yeah, that's that's, all, that's also that's dishonorable. Like that's, I don't. That's dishonorable, but it's not perverted. Yeah, but I'm just saying that's like, no matter what, whoever's taking invis is what, just doing what, dishonorable what, things. You could you could be like the greatest spy ever for your country, oh. or you could be the uh, hold up, Ace, unable to catch him. Yeah, but if you had flight, like I could have saved Vegas, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> You could be the greatest philanthropist that ever lived with invisibility because no one would know, right? You could just do things without Why anyone you knowing you that, are. By the way. Therefore, you're denying <laughs> the good feeling that you get from people knowing. Why would you guys laugh at that, Austin? Oh, oh, I don't I don't have sympathy for flat earthers. All right, that's fair. Let me that. You just insulted half our audience, Charles. Kyrie. All right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> 10 to 6. A... Uh, not that big of a lead for OGC. In fact, it's Cloud9 who are playing aggressively right now. It seems like they're taking a different tactic to trying to approach that mid tower. Now they're invading the jungle a little bit more, getting a little bit more set up. Ace is still the most farm hero on the map with Armlet and Heaven's Halberd. If he gets to BKB, then maybe the press the attack actually becomes a better save. You just take off a stun, he activates BKB, then it becomes really powerful. But I mean, is, isn't this like... Uh it's still okay for Huskar later, right? Like, neither Kunkka nor Gyro are, like, great against him. Uh, I think when you have a lot of items. Like, when it's, like, six Like an Ag six Satanic yeah. Gyrocopter would... He'll, he'll do, crush him. He'll just stand there. And he's got a lot of heroes that I feel like are useful at fighting behind him. Like, they have a lot of control on the side of OG. Yeah, I guess they can Grabs the Courier, but now you're going to be pulled back by the X. Oh, he slide dodged it. Eternal Envy managed to hit Chessie with the slide chains while simultaneously dodging the X pullback there from the Kunkka. Still going to be hit by a missile, and they didn't actually get a kill. But maybe he may have saved his own life. Unable to save Miseries, though, who is caught in the corner. Have they gotten any track money? I don't think so. It's been so six either. kills for a long time. But. Yeah, that's that's the issue with uh, track. Is like it's a cool spell, but you have to have a lineup that can periodically get kills to make use of it. It's like hand of Midas, right? And it's in an ability for your mm. team. Mm. But it's your ultimate, so it's supposed to be doing a lot. And oh. Ace is going to run in here. He's going to get gripped. Yeah, look at that. Pexu oh, just here. kind of charging forward. They do need to press the attack to be able to cleanse off this glimpse or go for the duel. Something. Ace, he's going to be break free, but there's too much. OGC just needed a few seconds of stun to be able to collapse onto Ace. Now they're going to try and collect some additional kills. Snaking pulled back by the X into the Earthshaker. Z Freak whomps him, and Chessie takes the double kill. Chessie's played this game very well, by the way. He's finding good targets to go on. He's not just going blindly for the first person he sees. Did Envy just remnant? Like uh, so he could dodge. He thought he was going to get X. Yeah. I think it's reasonable. Actually hits him with the torrent. That vision allows him to be able to get the X, but uh, they shouldn't be diving too deep here. Just focus on getting that tier two. A lot of them are tracked up here, and this could be the fight. The Cloud9 are able to finally get some track kills going. They already grabbed Pexu. Now they try and retreat back away from Madara. Madara focusing on that kill on a Misery. Will manage to pick it up, but he's getting lower and lower. They just need should to poke a and Should be able to pick him up with a slight. Do manage to do so. Eternal Emmy gets a secondary team uh, team kill for them. As now they look to be able to grab oh, a Freak a or there. a duel actually going out on the side. Managed to find the Beast. Master, a big kill on the Shibe if they can get it, but the torrent actually stops oh, him. Oh, is the kill. Oof. He's got no dual wins yet. That's sad. Overwhelming odds doesn't land, and that third kill is just going to evaporate into the air. It's well done by Envy, though. Really good poking, and he kept the fight going for uh, quite a while. He dodged like both the X torrents. I'm always hyped to see uh, Eternal Envy Ember Spirit ever since. Uh, Shanghai Major? Ever since EG versus OG Frankfurt Major oh, upper bracket one. finals. One of the best games of yeah. Dota that I've ever seen. Double Rapier. Yeah. I thought we had that game. And then uh, then we just... So Envy, this was back when um, 
Ember went the physical damage build. Sorry, I said EG versus OG. Yeah, EG I would, versus Secret. I was very yeah, confused. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I knew Charlie what you were talking about. I, I, I knew what you were talking about. Envy played for OG? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. like in a coma for four in years. In a different life, Eternal Envy yeah, is Dan, DI win. Dan looked so confused for a second. That's why I was explaining <laughs> yeah. it. I was like... X. Snaking. Fiend's gripped up. Ace can't do anything to stop Ace him except for try and go for the kill onto Peksu. But... He's a step ahead of anybody else from his team. His team is flowing in now, but he's already down to about a quarter of his health. Now being hit by the torrent, the bolt's gonna come in. He pushes back, disarms them all, but the magic damage is still enough. Better luck next time, says Peksu from the grave. As Cloud9 forced so he's to gonna retreat to one. their base, but he's still gonna be able to get the primal roar, make it a third kill with the Fisher block, the torrent. There's so much long range poke and prod and initiation and any other word Khan likes to use to describe that mannerism of fighting. Yeah, C9 has no peel for each other. That's true. <laughs> Very true. No, they have press the attack. That's peel. Not effective enough peel. No, no. Peel. No, press the attack. It's a cleanse. Ah, true. Super surprised that Ace decided to jump in there. Yeah, that looked uh, not good. Yeah, they, they, uh, they keep on getting caught in these situations where, like, one person gets caught, and then they're not very together. So just like the closest person goes in, tries to help him out, and then that person then in turn gets gone on. Next thing you know, it's a three versus five. I think um, OG is doing a good job of staying together as five. It's super hard for C9 to take an actual team fight. They don't really have team fight. They keep on winning all these fights still, but by being five man, they aren't actually growing their net worth lead that much. That being it. said, all they do need to do is just slowly grow it over time. Peksu, okay, he separates from the herd a little bit, but that's what you gotta do sometimes when you're looking for warding. He will be punished. Runs into the smoke on Cloud9, gives away some dual damage. And some track gold. This is an Envy classic. If they just went in for Roche right now. Well, they're doing it. <laughs> I mean, this is like a staple of Envy teams. It's like, all right, screw Roche. I mean, Peksu isn't even dead for that long, so. I mean, this is a. This He's going to come back. Primal Roar, pick off maybe onto the Grimstroke. He's dead. Pylai Tai falls, but he does have a buyback here. They're going to enter into the Roshan pit, scaring Ace back. Fisher blocking him. Not quite in. He should be managed to get up that cliff. Maybe he doesn't want to. Ace turning, threatening a fight here. He's trying to play off of his armlet toggle right now. It's up to about half of his health pool. OGC backing away from the Roshan pit. They're they going to have no to re engage soon. Cloud9, they're going to keep forcing this issue. Soulbind up to the north of the pit, onto the Beastmaster, not locking into any heroes. Madara goes in the pit just at the right time. Right, Roshan's about to fall. Falls just on the floor. Jump in, and Turtle Levy goes for it, but he can't quite snatch it. Jesse gets there first with a Kunkka. Now the Fiend's grip from the side, and Echo Slam to finish him off. Snaking, and A somehow still alive through all that damage. How do they do it? Eternal Levy, he comes back in, finishes off that Aegis, and still Madara fighting inside the pit, but most of their damage dealers are gone. Jibe, though, will handle him just with some right clicks. Takes him down, Cloud9, their core is gone. On supports on retreat, but Pylai die can't go anywhere, can't hide. It's gonna be dieback for him. Only the bounty hunter, that pervert, he just watched it all. That was like a six-man wipe with the buyback and misery bought back too. He's gonna track to try to slow down something, but uh, yeah, that decision to go in for Roche, they had to know that OG Seed was gonna fight there. OG Seed realizes this is the only way that Cloud9 is gonna come back into this game, even if it costs you like two buybacks. Mm -hmm. Just throw bodies at it. I mean, it's so hard to fight into, like, pit against that much AoE, right? You've got Echo Slam to worry about. You've got Boat and Torrent to worry about. Gyrocopter's AoE. That's just a lot of stuff that you don't want to be fighting in a small area. But that's what Roshan pits. That's what they do. Yeah, it's... And, and, and what does C9 have? They have... Grim? Yeah, they have Grimstroke. Oh, sneaking. Trying to catch him, but Z-Freak chain stuns Misery up long enough to be able to get his blink away. Oops. Drops sentry on the high ground. Peksu catches Misery on his retreat through the Radiant Jungle. C9. Bit by bit. 2K becomes 4K, 4K now becomes a 6K net worth lead for OG Seed. But Cloud9, they only need one fight to go well to be able to turn this game around, especially with that track gold. A nice three-man Fisher with a slept-up Grimstroke in the back, allowing OG Seed to be able to disengage 
from that team fight that could have been a little bit uh, precarious. Yeah, that was the Roy use too. So they've got a little bit more time. Keep on keeping on. They keep snaking where he is. Gyrocopter now is BKB. That is a big turning point for certain. Are they keeping on for anything at the moment? What's their end game of surviving here? For C9? Yeah. I think C9's idea would probably be, or like the best way I think that you can win is you have to force like kind of a crappy roar. Uh, hold that uh, thought. Okay, just uh, the runnage you play. It's one way to initiate. Snaking just charges at Madara. Madara does have the BKB that we talked about. Now the Echo Slam locking down the two of them. The Ember Spirit's going to be caught. He jumps away to the Remnant, though. With that double damage, Journal Envy thought maybe he could fight. He's going to be eggs pulled back into the Gyrocopter, who gets that double kill. Same goes for Z Freak. Twinsies make a kill streak for Jibe to finish it off. And GG Cloud9 okay, have been officially broken here at Loop Bet Dota Summit 12. They will exit the tournament without a single win. So you're going to ask me what they can do here, or what the plan is. <laughs> and I think the real plan should have been, I don't think you lead with your LC because you need his, you need uh, him to dispel. Press the so attack, It's yeah. like the only way that you can win the fight, I feel. That's a desperation, isn't it? Just I think Cloud9 was like, yeah, this is just, like, just it's done. done. We're done. They're, they, uh, they seem pretty frustrated, for sure. All right, well, that is it. OG Seed for Cloud9. Take a break. We'll come back and talk about OG Seed. Looking hot right now. So hot. I, uh, I begged, I pleaded, I negotiated, I dared everything I could to get any of the OG Seed members, and they all said that Chessie, my man, is going to be on the mic to and talk Madara. to us about that series. And Madara. He said he, said he would also come back. Hello. Hi. Hello. You guys want to... Put up a, a bit, microphone. A little bit <laughs> closer. To, Dan, teach them proper yeah. microphone etiquette, Mike as, etiquette. A, as a Wait former stand-up comedian. Hello. You're good. So you can take it out of the mic? stand if you want. No, no, it's fine. I'm sure it should be fine can like this. Can I take this, this off? Yeah. Or no. You, yeah. yeah, you can if you want. Yeah. Oh. If you want to be a fancy boy, <laughs> then you can do what you want. No. There yeah. we go. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Easy. How'd sure. you guys feel about that series against Cloud9? It feels good. I think... It felt like they were a little bit broken, so like I'm mm. not sure. Yeah, yeah. They, the last GG call definitely felt that way. But um, I mean, everybody that I've talked to here says that Cloud9 has, like, they have the player skill. Like, they have what it takes to make a great team. Um, they just obvi obviously aren't there because they just got put together. Do you guys feel similar? I mean, yeah. if you look at what the players in the team have accomplished, right? The major winner is the you know Mr. Got second place TI. I mean, there's there's a lot of uh, high skilled players in that team for sure. Yeah, it doesn't need time, I think. Speaking of time, you guys have had some time to to really gel together. In fact, I see uh, I see the two of you hugging it out <laughs> after every single game. Is bromance. that is that a ritual you guys have at this <laughs> yes, point? Or? Yes, it's a bromance. <laughs> it's a bromance. Yes. Me and Omar likes to get cozy. Yes. Uh, well, <laughs> let's I'll put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys also room together at events? Uh, not, not now. Well, yeah. I have in the past. Yeah. Mm. I I'm mean, you gotta make sure to get synergy with other players yeah, on the team. Yeah, no, well. I'm rooming with our manager right now, Alan. Okay. He's standing over there. The it, it's it's like the worst and best roommate <laughs> at the same time. Like we're having <laughs> a great that? time at night watching YouTube, having a good time, exchanging clips, and then in the morning, I had my alarm set for 7 a.m. this morning, 7:01. This dude is like asking me questions, singing. I'm like, please, give me at least 15, 20 minutes. Then, then we can do this. <laughs> Does he not respect the snooze? No, absolutely no. not. Does he no snore? respect for the snooze. Does he oh. snore? Uh, he might, but not th that I've noticed because I've been really tired. <laughs> do you snore, Alan? I think I do, but I don't think... I've got these nasal strips that I've got. Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Good man. Madara, who's your uh, roommate for this event? Uh, it's Zifrik. Okay. Zach. You getting to know Zifrik? What do yeah. you feel about him? He's a good boy, you know? like a Very good lad. A, yeah. <laughs> your usual American boy. Yeah. As a team that was a couple of you played with each other before, but a lot of you are new to each other, you seem quite close already. Has it gelled very, very quickly? Yeah. I think everyone is in good terms with each other. Everyone is like a nice guy open and stuff so it feels yeah. easy. I think we connect a lot like easy on a personal level in this team because everyone is 
definite friends outside of the team, which is something that is very important. I think a lot of teams don't really have like what we have. We're you know going by the pool and enjoying the hot tub and you know going to Walmart at midnight, just having a good, <laughs> good laugh, you know, just doing doing nothing. But I think doing those sort of team activities outside of the game is also super important and having a good time with it. So. Yeah, I definitely agree. We I mean, have good good chemistry between each other. Like it just feels like yeah, we became friends really fast and easy. Is that something that happened naturally, or is that just intentional to to hang out with each other? No, it just happened naturally. I don't think you can force something like that because yeah. if you try to force it, then you know no one's gonna have a good right. time with it. It's not gonna really work out. Yep. Does it feel like a vibe or ethos that's behind the OG brand as a group? Because everyone always talks about how the main OG team won t two TIs with the power of friendship. Do you feel that there's a similar ethos around your team? Yeah, I mean, you can maybe call it that way. It's definitely yeah. true that that is like the philosophy of OG and what they've been trying to do for a long time. And they have many good ways of enforcing that in a way. Like we do this thing at the end of every day that is kind of like group therapy for each other where we just sit <laughs> down like i mean that's what it is so instead yeah, of just holding fine. grudges against each other we, we talk the day out so if these things go bad if things go good it doesn't matter sure. we'll tell each other about how the day went what went good what went poorly if you need help with something yeah, what, what so you're well. happy for and then you go around in a circle and we do this every single day and it was something that notel told us early on yep. that uh, they think it's super important for a team to do and we stuck with it and I think it help, helps us a lot. Yeah, yeah, it definitely helps a lot. That's really nice. I that think um, I, I was actually curious. I have, I haven't uh, heard this. Um, OG Seed, how did you guys get started? Like, who was first contacted by OG to kind of put this this whole thing together? I think it was Plexu. And yeah. And yeah, they tried to make a team around him. And okay. he, yeah. He contacted, I think, everyone. Yeah, so so Pexu... Did he pick the other four, or did you guys link up? A uh, little bit of both, because Pexu yeah. had the freedom to pick his players, pretty much, with the supervision of, of Notel in the beginning. And so when they reached out to me, it was only Pexu and, and Zach that was on the team. Mm -hmm. And then we were kind of talking amongst ourselves who we wanted for the last spots. And I was on a team with, with Sib at the time, and we were discussing some other offlaners as well, but I... I had a really good feeling about Sibbe, I know he's super, super talented, so I wanted him on the team, so I pushed kind of hard for him, and uh, Pexu really wanted Madara on the team. I'd never played with him before, but of course I knew all about this boy, so <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a hard sell. Were you trying to forge anything in my an identity around the way that you wanted to play, or was it just these are good players who haven't achieved as much as they deserve? Mm, not sure. Maybe... Uh, we were thinking about playing four protect one, like or something like that at the start. But I think, of course, it has evolved, and we're doing like um, it always depends on the game or whatever. Yeah, we had some ideas in the beginning, yeah. and like how we wanted to play the game. And obviously, I play some cheese heroes, and Omar is very good at playing the hard carry typical role. And I think in the beginning we were kind of set at one style, and then you just adapt over time and see what works. And now we have yeah. a little bit of both, I guess. Like sometimes I will be the game-winning hero if I'm on, on some cheese meep or whatnot. Most of the time, Omar will be on some some type of hard carry. I started buying some more Solar Crest for my boy, so <laughs> <laughs> keep keep him hitting hard. <laughs> All right, well, perfect. Thanks, guys. Thanks for telling Thank us you. about the team, and uh, good luck further. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Let's see if I can put this back. Dan, if you could, there is a green card somewhere on that table, and I would love to hear those shout-outs in your dulcet tones. There, there is a yellow card as and, a, a, and an orange card. As soon as the green card produces itself. Yeah, yeah but that, that one doesn't exist. <laughs> um, Maybe if we just keep <laughs> saying, green card. Well, give it a shout-out. We are doing a giveaway here, bts.gg forward slash giveaway. Dan, what is your favorite item? you see on that list because you can get it all but if if you you can't get it because you're a part of production yes. but if you had the opportunity to just take one i i need a new chair quite mm. badly actually so that chair if someone wants to win that and then gift it to me i would be very appreciative it is a pretty sweet chair i personally am a big fan of dotes i'll take that anytime because mm. that could mean anything couldn't it blitz charlie Take the monster hat. Big fan of monster energy, guys. Mm. Keeps me uh, real energized. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Let's get mm -hmm. it. Yeah, you, you really hear it in your <laughs> voice. Charlie? Dude, I also need the chair. All right, so my okay. apartment has uh, has no couch. 
Mm -hmm. It only has two gaming chairs that I stole from the EG office in 2014. So do you really need a third gaming chair? Well, <laughs> those the, the chairs, it's been a long time, and those chairs are broken now. Uh, <laughs> so okay. I need a new chair, and I refuse to buy another one. I refuse to pay money for another one. So that's your argument for why you deserve the chair from whatever fan wins that great yes. giveaway from BTS. Dan, your rebuttal? Um, I, I'm very tall, and I get a bad back. All right, um, all right. You know what? You know what? I'll, I'll do this. Whoever wins that chair, I will send you all five mice from the from the TI5 winning mice. I still mm. have them. Mm. And I probably have like a couple mm -hmm. keyboards as well. That is worth more than a chair. Sell the mice and buy it. What, what, what am I going to do? Sell it on eBay? I can't do that. <laughs> Why not? That's, All right, that's Dan. Like that. <laughs> it sounds like you're stumped. So you're going to have to take some more time to come up with a better offer than that. We are going to take a break.